Lights, camera, action! So I'm just leaving FedEx office where I picked up the script that I told y'all I just finished and then Buddy called me the non rightness black man on the internet. Shout out to my man working the desk at FedEx. He was like, is this a TV pilot? I was like, no, it's a feature screenplay. He was just like, good luck, man. Good luck. I was like, thank you. Thank you. A shout out to the folks, the good folks at FedEx office. Yeah, I made it home just in time because it is pouring now. Oh man, I fucking hate the rain. <laughs> poor Jay Fingers. Poor, poor Jay Fingers hates the rain. Yeah, I really do though. I really do. So if you are wondering why I was picking up a printout of the script that I finished from FedEx office, it's because the ink in my oh so wonderful printer has run out yet again. While I do print a lot, I don't feel like, I don't feel like it's that much, you know? Whatever though. And I'm sitting here thinking I have enough ink to like print this script out. Nope, no, no I didn't. So yeah, yeah, I just went ahead and I just sent the file to FedEx. And I was just like, y'all print this for me. Cause even though I've already done like a first kind of rewrite, on Azalea. I like to read it like on paper and mark it up with a green pen. That's what I'm gonna do with this copy that I have. But I'm gonna do something else. Let me share with y'all my plans for Azalea. So when it comes to Azalea, I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling really good about it, actually. I wasn't sure about it when I finished the first draft, but when I went back and reread and, you know, did the rewrite and everything, I realized that there was a lot there. There's a lot of good there. So I made the decision to submit, well, submit it, to send it to We Screenplay for their coverage service. But what I discovered is that they have a new tier, which is like a first draft tier. Like this did not exist when I last used We Screenplay. And admittedly, it's it's been a while. It's probably been like more than a year uh, since I've used we Screenplay's coverage service. But they've now added this tier where it's like a first draft tier. It's their least expensive package. It's like 60 bucks. You only get like about a page and a half of notes. The reader will like craft or try to craft a log line for you, so that's good. <laughs> but it's really just a page and a half of notes, you know, just to let you know uh, like what's working, what isn't. Uh, areas you could focus on, you know, things, things of that nature. You don't get a pass, consider, or recommend score. They don't do that. And I think that that's smart because when you see that, I don't know, you know, you kind of feel like, is this what a development executive or producer, is this how they would feel about this script? You know, if they got it, would they pass on it? And I feel like what this level of coverage does instead of like putting that in your mind. You know, it's just really just just trying to show you like what you should focus on. Again, what's working, what isn't. I have total faith in We Screenplay. You know, I've used them several times before. Uh, they came recommended by my ex-mentor, which is why I started using them. And, you know, I think they're fantastic. So I decided to send Azalea this like first draft, this like, rewritten first draft, I sent it to them. Um, I actually did that last night. It takes a while. Like their turnaround time is 72 hours. I feel like the last time I did this though, like I got the feedback like right away, like almost like, you know, within like 24 hours or so. I'm not expecting that. I'm not expecting that. But if it happens, it happens. But yeah, turnaround is like 72 hours. So I am looking forward to what the reader has to say. Another thing about We Screenplay, you know, yeah, I just want an opinion. You know, I do want someone else's eyes on this. Now, I've got a other couple of, like, trusted readers, you know, people who expressed interest in reading it a long time ago, and other people who I just, you know, trust their opinion, trust that they won't, like, blow smoke up my ass and be like, gee, this is the best thing ever. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> I want an honest opinion. You know, what do you think? Again, what's working, what isn't? Is this a story even worth telling? 
So um, one of the things that, you know, I like about We Screenplay, because I do trust them, because I do like the feedback that I've gotten before, you know, I trust that, you know, this is, this is someone who doesn't know me. This is going to be, you know, as impartial a read as, as I'm going to get, at least right now. So yeah, you know, I am looking forward to the opinion of a stranger on this script that I poured my heart and soul in that took a long time to write. Took too long for some of y'all to the fact that some of y'all called me the, you know what, I'm not even gonna, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not even gonna get into that again. But yeah, you know, like this was a difficult script to write and kind of wondering if it's worth it. Three days later. So I did get feedback from We Screenplay on Azalea. And this is interesting, like I mentioned, like this was this is a new tier. This is what they call like their first draft tier. So it's not really like the pass, consider, recommend sort of coverage that they normally give. This is just more, you know, just kind of like broad thoughts, a broad overview of like, you know, the reader's opinion on the script, what works, what doesn't, etc. So as far as what works, this is what they have to say. And I'm just going to read this in full. Azalea is a very original story that definitely covers new narrative ground with its setting and the awareness it raises of elderly abuse. Due to this, the project is more than entertainment as it addresses real life issues that are not discussed on the silver screen nearly enough. This is because we are offered thought-provoking substance that stimulates us for an active viewership. It also has a lingering effect on us after turning the final page, suggesting the project can really make a change. The themes explored are universal subject matters, too, that do not require specific trends, social climates, or an audience with a niche interest to resonate, which means the story will touch many. In fact, it offers a ton of heartbreaking moments that help the work elicit a lot of emotion. Okay, positives. Those are positives. But in their section of changes to consider... They do feel that uh, the theme that I'm exploring of elder abuse could be explored in a lot more depth. And they just give suggestions as to certain elements um, or scenes that could be fleshed out. Or even, you know, character relationships that could be fleshed out. Uh, some of these ideas, I think, um, are good. that They have merit. Some of them, not so much, simply because, you know, I wanted certain... Uh, certain scenes or certain Im certain events to have an impact. God, I hate using that word like that. I hate using impact like that, but <laughs> but you guys get what I mean. Like I wanted these scenes and I wanted these events and how they affect the characters, uh, especially my main character. I want it to have an impact. So some things I don't, some things I just don't show right away. That's That's what I mean. You know, we see the after effect of what happens. But one of their suggestions is to maybe show some of this stuff. And again, I'm not opposed to this. I think that there there are some there are some scenes, there are some elements that I can flesh out. So yeah, absolutely. Another thing they say is that aside from the story's dramatic question of if the main character will protect his mother from elderly abuse, uh, the general conflict and central theme are resolved at the end of the second act. And this is something that I kind of worried about because in my mind, I knew I wanted to structure it like this. And I was kind of afraid of this where people would think at the end of the second act, oh, you know, like it's, it's done. Like, you know, like that's the conclusion of the story, but then it continues on into the third act. And that's because the story isn't finished. The story is about this man's relationship with his mother and so that's why the story continues past you know what this reader felt was the conclusion because the overall story is about the main character and his mother so they do say that you know those having seen the first premise as compelling may lose interest and feel misled while those looking for the latter will have to wait too long until they can enjoy it so i'm thinking what i just need to do is just kind of like take what's explored in the third act and just really kind of make it more prominent in the first and second act, which is something that I thought I did. I'm not going to lie. Like I really did think that that sort of that element was prominent in the first and second act so that when the third act concludes, 
it wraps up and it is a satisfying conclusion. They also say that, you know, some of the other characters deserve their own respective subplots. And again, this just goes back into like showing some of those elements. Um, you know, the reader suggests that, you know, I show like what happened instead of just kind of like revealing the aftermath. And so that's, you know, again, like that's, that's a suggestion that I'm on board. Like that's a note that I can take and be like, okay, yeah, you know, I can see how this would improve the script. So again, you know, that's, that's something that I'm going to take and work on. And the last note I find interesting because they say, essentially, we're not told anything about the characters. And I feel like I try to reveal the nature of the relationships between these characters over the course of the script. Like, I'm not going to hit you over the head, you know, with some obvious stuff like, you know, my main character is the family outcast or... Uh, you know, this character, this is why they are evil. You know, I'm not going to hit you over the head with that, like, you know, in an obvious way. You know, it's it's something that I try to show gradually throughout the script. You get it through dialogue. You get it through interactions. There's a part in the script where someone tells my main character, hey, you got to have kids to add some, you know, so that the family can grow. And someone responds to that statement, you know, kind of sarcastically, that, in my way, is showing that the main character is really an outcast. Like, you know, even though this one person said about, you know, adding to the family, making the family grow, the reaction from this other character lets you know that they don't really consider the main character family. Like, stuff like that. Um, maybe that's a little too subtle. I mean, maybe I should, like, really hammer that home. But the thing is, I've I've always been a a writer that trusts, you know, my audience. It's like... Y'all are smart. You'll get it. So that's something that's something that I've got to think on. But maybe that will be revealed, you know, when I flesh out some of these scenes, add some scenes, like whatever. So, yeah, you know, this was, um, this was, you know, eye opening. And, you know, what I love is that, look, I'm never looking for super duper positive. Oh, my God, this is perfect. You know, I'm not looking for that kind of feedback. I want to know what works, what doesn't, what can I improve upon? And this was my first time using this particular tier of We Screenplay's uh, coverage service. So, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't get as granular as like other tiers, uh, but this does like, I think, point me in the right direction. So I've got it out to other people, uh, to you know, who are reading it. So once I get feedback from them, you know, I'm just going to take all, all that, uh, see what works for me. Uh, see what I think will improve the script and try to incorporate those notes in the next rewrite. And from there, we'll just keep it pushing, you know, just more development and more, you know, more whatever. But I'm, I'm feeling really confident in this script. Like, as I've mentioned, this is the first script that I've written that's really like dramatic not super duper silly, not super duper, you know, just kind of like, just ov overtly comedic. Like this is really like the closest to like, I would say an Oscar bait script <laughs> that I've ever written or that I, well, I won't say will ever write, who knows what the future holds, but this is the closest to like, you know, a serious kind of like issue driven character driven script that I've ever done. So I'm pleased with the feedback that I got. I felt like it was worth the money. And yeah, like I said, I already told y'all, you know, I'm going to take what I think uh, works, uh, what's applicable and apply it. Finally, I just, <laughs> so I made an entire video or rather I shot an entire video about the film American Fiction. My buddy Kenny and I, we saw it back in December, very early on, and we actually got a chance to like meet and speak with the writer and director of American Fiction, Cord Jefferson. Super cool dude, like, Cord is just an awesome dude. <laughs> Shout out to Cord, man. We all lived in the same Brooklyn neighborhood years ago. Used to go to like the same bars and everything, just never met before December, so. Uh, shout out to him. Shout out also to Jeff Wright. 
who's the star of American fiction and who also lived in the same Brooklyn neighborhood. Jeff and I have met. I've got a funny Jeff story. I'm not going to tell it in this video. Anyway, after seeing American fiction, you know, Kenny and I, you know, went out for beers. And I was just telling him, I was just like, you know, as much as I love the film, I saw a little too much of myself and my life in that movie. And what bummed me out wasn't that I saw myself in the movie, but it was that I saw elements of the script that I had been working on <laughs> in that movie. You know, for, for me, I was just like, wow, there, there are some parts in American fiction that are very close to Azalea. And yeah, you know, I was bummed out about it. And afterward, Kenny sent me an email. And in the email, he says, I was thinking about Azalea and how you were a little discouraged in seeing some of your story's themes played out in American fiction. I know it sucks. I've been there before, too. But I don't think it needs to impede your progress in any way. If anything, just continue to tell the story that is true to you, but be sensitive to your execution. The reason you see the similarities is because it's a universal experience, just like graduation or childbirth. There's plenty of room to tell your story your way, bro. I just want to say, Kenny, thank you, because that really, that gave me a boost. You know, after getting that email, that's really what inspired me to like go back to the computer, boot up Final Draft, and hammer this script out, even though I had like Barbie the dog lady above me. That is what got me out of my most non-writing black man funk. So Kenny, I appreciate you. Thanks a lot, bro. And, um, and I appreciate all of you that are watching this and everything. Seriously, the 98% of y'all who are <laughs> positive and encouraging, Y'all really don't know, like, how much... Y'all just really don't know. It's enough to make me want to, like, go out when it's raining. <laughs>